repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand was the message that Jesus started preaching at the very beginning of his public ministry according to Saint Matthew the Apostle the Evangelist chapter 3 verse 2 the arrest of Saint John the Baptist marked the ending of the ministry of Saint John the Baptist and this also meant that it marked the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus Christ. The evangelist said when John was arrested, Jesus moved out of his town where he grew up, where he lived in Nazareth, and he moved and he went to Capernaum. And that's why Capernaum was considered his hometown because that's where he had gone after leaving Nazareth. Jesus went to Galilee to start his ministry, to start his preaching. He did not go to the high priests. He did not go to the leaders. He did not go to the learned and educated. He went to preach his ministry among the outcasts, the forgotten, those that are considered to be of lower class, those that people do not want to bother with them. Because the learned, the leaders, the powerful, they are content with their benefits, whatever they, they gain, and they are more interested in that than they are interested in the truth. So Jesus went to those that are interested in the truth. That's who he wanted to care for, not those that were self-serving, but rather that those who wanted to be united with the truth. Dwelling of Jesus in Galilee fulfilled the prophecies. The prophecies here in particular was the prophecy of prophet Isaiah spoke about the coming of the light. Light in the Holy Bible is a person Light in the Holy Bible is God. God is light. Often we hear light, enlightenment, illumination, either in the Bible or with other philosophies. The meanings are very different. Light, enlightenment, illumination in the Holy Bible is a divine presence. It's a divine action. The divine light is the life of the soul. When that light is extinguished in the soul, that soul is dead. That's why they call it dark soul. It means the divine light no more exists in that soul. And that divine light can only be generated by the love of God. It comes from God. As an example, when the sun rises, it reveals itself it reveals the things that it sheds light on. Likewise, the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ, the divine light of God, when He appeared, He revealed Himself. And He revealed all the hidden powers 
of the souls of the people that he created. Our, our Lord Jesus Christ came to bring light to the world so people's eyes are opened and they can discover their sins and they can discover the truth. And that's where his message about repentance becomes effective. It was necessary for God to come as a full person, soul and body, in order to save man that has, because man has soul and body and needed the help of the divine to be saved. So that's why it was necessary for God to become man, to become as a full person, so he can reach to the element of the human being and transfer to the human being, to the people who believe in him, the divine element and unite them with God. The impact of the spiritual darkness upon the soul is tremendous, is dangerous, it's similar or in a sense to the impact of ignorance. Darkness divides and destroys because there is no possibility to see what's going on when there is darkness. And that's what ignorance does. Because through ignorance, you don't know what you're dealing with. The presence of the spiritual life, the presence of the spiritual light, unites the brains and it heals. Light, enlightenment, illumination, they facilitate, facilitate the process of repentance. Repentant people through the divine light are brought to the truth. They are united with the truth. They are free by the truth because the truth is revealed. Repentant people more so are brought back to themselves. Sin divides man within himself. Sin turns man against himself. It turns his body against his soul. So he does what is harmful to his soul. So that's a, that's a division. It's a war that goes inside man. Repentance brings man together as one entity. Repentance is something more than being sorrowful. It's something more than being regretful. Repentance is a, is a positive action. It's a positive energy. It's a good thing. Repentance in Greek means the change of mind. You change your mind. You change your opinion, you change your attitude, you change your ways. Because it's the manifestation of the truth. Repentance is accepting the truth. That what is repentance. A lot of people know the truth. They don't accept it because it hurts their whatever self-serving things they have that's going on. So repentance is accepting the truth. Repentance is conversion and turn toward God. There will be no punishment in the life to come 
for people who repent in this life. Even those that repent just a short time, momentarily before their death, they are still saved and they are still liberated from the punishment that is to come. Punishment in the eternal life is reserved for people who don't repent. Now, never ever buy the fallacy that there is no accountability. That is a fallacy. That this fallacy is intended to prevent people from repenting, so they are never saved. There is an accountability. The Holy Bible is very clear about that. Jesus is very emphatic about stating that there is an accountability. As a matter of fact, he is so emphatic that he says, every single word that we utter has an accountability in this life. Like if we do it in this life, has an accountability in the life to come. So there is an accountability. Yes, God is merciful upon those who repent. And he is just toward those who do not repent. So repentance requires struggle. It requires hard work. <clears throat> repentance purifies man's heart. So, in order to embark on a successful journey of repentance, we need to accept the pain of growth Ask any person that suffered from any addiction and became sober how much pain they had to endure until, made, until they made it to the other side. Things of worth, anything that is worth anything, requires struggle. Nothing that has great value comes through laziness. Likewise, goals of divine values must be pursued with rigor, attempt to reach them. Developing and enhancing our spiritual inner life, our spiritual part, the part that is inside, that is not visible, but is real. Enhancing that part, taking care of it, requires consistency. The heart must feel sorrow, must feel contrition for its sins. There is no repentance without feeling sorry for our sins. Repentance is not focusing on other people's sins. Repentance is focusing on our sins. Repentance requires self-examination. Every day we need time to sit down with ourselves and have conversation and examine ourselves for the day that is past, for the week that is past, or for the life that is past, and discover all the sins that we have committed. Repentance requires this conversation with our conscience. Our conscience knows 
and he tells us the truth. If we are willing to hear the truth. And it is okay to shed tears of our sins. This is one, there are three baptisms. Is the, the baptism when we become Christians. There is the baptism of tears. And there is the baptism of blood for the martyrs. So the baptism of tears is something that can be repeated all the time as we examine ourselves and examine our sins. And those tears, they purify and they purge and they expel those sins. And once they expel them, we don't owe them at all. They're gone. We don't answer for them in the life to come. Stillness and quietness of the mind are very much needed for the process of repentance. So silence, which is the language of God, and through silence we can hear God's voice, silence enhances our journey of repentance. Also, our earthly attachments and our memories of past sins, they must be cut off for the journey of repentance to be fruitful. Because our earthly attachments, they tend to distract us and pull us back to our past ways, past sinful ways. So, they must be cut off. The love of God that we find in the Bible when we read His words, when we read the life of the saints, in the prayers, in the liturgies, in the sacraments, being here at the church, enhances our struggle against ourselves until we are liberated from our sins. It enhances our journey toward repentance. Feeling awe and fear toward God is very important. People sin because they don't fear God. When the fear of God is brought back to the soul, sin is expelled out of the soul. Repentance prepares a place for God to come and take His dwelling place inside the soul. That's where God wants to be. God is restful. He rests among his saints. That is when he comes into the soul of the people that give him a place that is prepared for him. Repentance gives birth to virtues. Virtues are the uh, actions of love that are performed by the person. Virtues are born because there is a union of man's weakness and God's strength. When this union happens through repentance, virtues are born and the actions of love are done by people as a fruit of repentance. Virtues and repentance make the prayer of the righteous person very powerful.
One thing that is important to remember about the process of repentance is to protect one's mind. The mind is the battlefield of good and evil. Mind control is what Satan wants to do. And the way he does it, through thoughts. Especially impure thoughts of all kinds. Not engaged, not getting engaged with our thoughts is a big part of winning that battle. So protecting one's person from impure thoughts, from distracting thoughts, and replacing that uh, with prayers when the thoughts in, try to invade the mind is a big credit, major credit toward winning that battle. And that's how the person eyes are fixed on the ultimate goal that is going back to heaven. I leave you with what God said in the Deuteronomy to the people. He said to them, I have set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and the length of days. So, in this short verse, God laid out a choice and the way to do it, the reward and how to reach it. And that is in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 and 20. Thank you very much.